Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Happy three-day weekend. Uh, for, the, for those who don't know, the markets are closed on Monday. Uh, observance of President's Day uh, weekend. So shout out to all uh, the presidents that made us uh, get that extra day off. God bless. If you are new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe, uh, and all that good, juicy social media stuff people say uh, to help continue to uh, help us along, to grow our channel, to spread the word of unbiased technical analysis. So let's talk about the tape. Hope everybody had uh, a really good uh, trading week. Uh, as we know, every single week is all about data, right? Uh, data, 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 data. This week was no uh, different. You had uh, CPI, you had the PPI, you had non-farms, you had all this different stuff. And basically, it's telling you exactly the same thing. We are tone deaf, right? Remember, we use the word tone deaf a lot. Uh, buyers uh, get numb, sellers get numb, even going back to the mortgage crisis of uh, 2007 through uh, 2009. Eventually, uh, sellers got tired. Eventually, we all uh, got used to the idea that, hey, you know what? We, we've, you know, we came this close. Uh, into having global ec economic Armageddon, and somehow we survived. Granted, somehow was uh, federal government bailing out the banks, but again, that's a whole uh, different conversation for another time. But the point is the market eventually got tired of going down and sellers just got dried out and the market started rallying. And this is kind of where we are right now with this whole uh, inflation, interest rates, and the, you know the current uh, economic climate that we're living in. Uh, we know we we've known for a while. The initial reaction when they first started raising rates was, "Oh my God, what's going to happen?" The market started going down. That was part of the aggressive cycle in 2022 sell-off. But eventually, you know, the investors and traders and everybody else in between, they got tired, right? They got tired. They got numb to it. They they knew we were in a uh, in an economic climate that was just going to continue to try to tame inflation. Uh, and continue to raise rates. So we started rallying. We, we, we started rallying. This is, you know, definitely uh, a very, very incredibly uh, aggressive bull market that we've been having since the reclaim of the 278 level off the 50-day moving average. And going into this week, I mean, again, there was nothing really dramatic that the Fed could have possibly said, right? Um, we knew uh, that, that we still haven't tamed deflation. We know that every single Fed governor, it feels like there's 3,000 of them uh, speaking a day. Uh, but what the one thing that we continue to live with, the prospects of continuation of uh, Fed hikes until this quote unquote inflation uh, becomes tamed. And everything was going smoothly, right? Nothing was going crazy. Uh, last week was the first time uh, that the NASDAQ saw uh, a losing week uh, in about four weeks. Okay. So it wasn't that crazy. So the question was, you know, what was going to be this week, right? And we got our answer very, very quickly before the CPI number. Uh, every dip, and you, you kind of see this, and even you saw this on Friday, every dip continues to get bought, right? Even when you have the absolute technically red signal close, and if you watched uh, the video on Thursday, right? It was the last video that I recorded. You know, we had our first close below the 5 and 10-day moving average. I'm sure Kyler will post a clip of it. So, I, you know, we talked about on Thursday's video, that I thought there was a back test that was going to get to about the 299 level. And if you saw Friday's action, we got down to 298, 299 right at the open. So it was one of those situations that you didn't even have a chance to react, right? Technically, it played out well. The market back tested into the rising 20-day support, obviously creating uh, a line in the sand for, for the future. But the point is, it's one of those scenarios that even if you even if you blinked, right? Even if you were uh, even if you were exposed to having inventory overnight, your inventory probably didn't react unless it was like a name like Nvidia that we discussed, uh, or you know, you know, or names that had big, big runs like Microsoft uh, and and Meta. The point is, everything opened right at uh, right at rising support, and they just started bouncing again. And that's the kind of the market we're in. But the most important part and the most important takeaway that I think uh, the bulls the bulls really embraced was those comments by Bullard. If you guys remember, after the CPI 
uh, came out on Tuesday and the estimates were 6.2. They measured out at 6.4. Then we had that big, ugly, ugly close on Thursday. Uh, the PPI numbers came back. The bulls once again bought off that dip, actually took the market green. And then at one point, Bullard came out and said, well, wait a minute, maybe things are not as smooth as we, you know, we think. Maybe it's not, inflation's not as, you know, I'm paraphrasing, uh, tameable as we thought. And now everything is on the table. We might, you know, instead of going 25, we might go back to 50, right? And that's not out of the question. Uh, Menster or Fester, I forgot the dude's name, or even it's a man or a woman, I don't even know, even know it anymore. Um, the point is they were keep continue to talk that this cycle could continue into the into 2024, maybe even beyond. And that what led to that big, ugly reversal on Thursday, uh, continuation of that big, ugly gap down on Friday, but the common denominator is bulls are defending levels, and that's it. You you can you can sit there uh, and try to rationalize, which again, if you've been watching this video uh, and broadcast for a long time, you you know I've been you know beating down a dead horse. There's no reason to try to rationalize the market. It's irrational, and that's the whole beauty of of it all. Anything could happen. Anything will happen. And just when you get comfortable, that's when you get uh, you know that's when you get your 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 pants uh, below your ankle. And again. Uh, it's one of those situations that it, once you figure out that how irrational the market is, it's not going to make a difference anymore. You just start looking at phase value, and that's the market structure charts close at the end of the day. And the one thing, the, the major thing that I keep on reiterating in this type of environment is, you know, stop thinking. You know, stop thinking and react to price action, okay? I, I know you saw so many people, and we talked about this on Thursday's video, Right, I said the last thing you want to do, right, is short into the hole. Okay, that means shorting into an aggressive gap down into rising support. And and again, if you didn't listen to that, right, if you didn't have the experience necessary to understand what kind of market we're in, again, look what the market did. Look at the sixty minute view, right? Look at the sixty minute view. So here is your, you know, here is your gap down, right? This is your ugly Thursday reversal. We gap down, literally, we gap down. Look at the time here. We gap down at eight o'clock, seven o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning. Once the bell rang. They just ran the market up. You know, you talk about the cues. Uh, you talk about the, the cues. You know, four dollars off the lows, like nothing. They grind it right back up. So you have to really understand the nuances of where we are. The good part about it is, at least it's setting up a, a line in the sand in the future, right? So the bottom of this channel here is two ninety-seven and a quarter. Everybody see that? That's the low from uh, February the tenth. If you look at Friday's low, it was two ninety-eight. So this 297 level is going to be super duper important. Again, it, it just, we want to make sure that everybody's prepared going into the new week, right? So 297, that correlates perfectly to the rising 20-day uh, support. So if we lose 297 on a close, then yes, we will have more back tests to come. And again, if you're, if you're unaware of these levels and you're buying stock because you think your stock looks good, again, I promise you, if everything gets pulled, your stock is not going to be the sole survivor, right? It's not about uh, it's not about the sum of the parts, right? I think a lot of traders uh, they go into the into this industry and they go into the trading day saying, "Well, this stock is standing out." What about the eighteen thousand stocks that are not standing out, right? You you always want to go uh, with the whole, not the sum of the parts. Yeah, maybe you'll get lucky, make some money, but it's much easier to go with with the wave uh, than go against it. So uh, going into this week again, just as a point of reference for us to be prepared. In case they start pulling the market, 297 is going to be a very, very uh, important level uh, on the NASDAQ, on the QQQs for the bulls to defend. Any close below uh, will sell the tape. Uh, for the bulls to to really get going, right, for really get going uh, this week, I, I think two things need to occur. We need to reclaim Friday's channel, which is 302. And if you look at the supply, right, if you look at the 60-minute supply, it's sitting right here. You see this two two candles here? Right at nine o'clock in the morning, the high was 301.93, and this whole supply here is three, uh, 302. So the bulls need to get above 302. That's the first thing they should do for for them to start accelerating any type of uh, rally. Right, rally continuation of rally. They need to close. They need to reclaim uh, 304, 305. That's what they lost on the five and ten day moving average. So they need to reclaim back the five and ten day moving average. Start moving back higher and start attacking prices. Uh, if you look at individual names, um, there's definitely a lot of strength, right? I'll give you a perfect example. Tesla, it has been absolutely phenomenal, right? Absolutely phenomenal. We talked about if Tesla lost the the the, the ten day moving average on Thursday's video, uh, there was a potential to go lower. I shorted tw Tesla twice 
on Friday, right? Both trades, I was fighting tooth and nail just to make a couple of bucks on this thing. It was incredibly resilient. And they finally, uh, they finally reclaimed levels, right? They reclaimed back the 10-day moving average that they lost only on Thursday to reclaim that and the five-day moving average to go back. And now we're talking about, again, you know, a stone throws away from going back to the highs, which is amazing, which is absolutely amazing. Again, we've been, uh, you know, trading this thing on dips. We've been trading on these things uh, into strength. We've been trading these things on reversals. But boy, oh boy, the resilience of this thing is absolutely unmatched right now. And despite uh, the stock being up 100, 100, what, 5, 10%, uh, for the year, it's absolutely amazing, the continuation of strength. And now we want to watch the top of the channel here. You can see here on the 60-minute view, if it could get just above this whole channel here, it's going to start going daylight. And I think that push into that 220 level is still, you know, 220, 225 level will definitely be uh, on the table. One stock that definitely survived, uh, definitely survived a horrific uh, a horrific fall uh, on Friday was NVIDIA. Remember we were talking about NVIDIA, the same case scenario uh, as Tesla on Thursday's video, right? Same thing. It lost the 10-day moving average. And I said there's a shot against that uh, 310 level. That's exactly what it did, right? It got down to the 310 level, again, which is the rising support here, right? Which is rising support. So now we have a definitive line in the sand for the future, right? For the future uh, of the video. If this thing starts losing the 20-day moving average, then you have a lot of room down. I, I believe they report, uh, I think it's next week. I have to double check. I think they report, but they start losing the bottom of the channel here. Uh, you're going to have a lot of uh, problems. Uh, Google continues to be uh, definitely one of the weaker names. Uh, it's trying to fight. You know, it's, it's, it's having a fist fight here uh, at the 50-day moving average. Again, another one to watch in case there, there is uh, for the weakness again, first close below the 50-day moving average, and I think this thing uh, will go lower. We had, you know, we had definitely uh, some good success on Google for the last uh, couple of weeks, trying to trying to short this bottom channel here, but it keeps on uh, recouping back up. Um, big, you know, big names, uh, big uh, results this week from our earnings. We're over, from a lot of the high flyers from uh, from two years ago, they got they, they came crashing out to earth. A lot of pleasant surprises this week. You had. Uh, RVLX coming out with a really, really good numbers, right? Really nice numbers this week. At Airbnb, uh, I believe, put out their first uh, profitable quarter, right, uh, this year. Uh, you talk about TTD, another one, uh, had a lot of big moves. So these are candidates going into uh, next week. Now that there is some profit taking, you want to, you know, start looking at these things for potential five-day bounces. You see this orange line, right, guys? Everybody see this orange line? This is the potential. This is a potential area that short-term uh, support could be uh, set in place. So I'm definitely watching TTD this week. You know, Monday, Tuesday, if it comes into this five-day for potential bounce. Uh, same thing for Airbnb. It's probably like one or two days away from getting down to this five-day moving average as well. So there's a lot of you know, there's still a lot of really good sentiment, especially strong stocks. Uh, especially strong stocks that are coming back into support. Uh, that's definitely giving us uh, a really a lot of good value. There's also a lot of names that you know that don't look great, right? Look at Square. I know Square comes out with earnings uh, soon. It's you know it's holding the bottom of the range here. You know you got to definitely keep an eye on a name like that. Uh, look at Lucid, for example, right? Just want to give you guys uh, some names I'm kind of watching uh, all weeks. So look at Lucid. Lucid had that big uh, that one big day of speculation and potential takeover. It's kind of flagging now, and it's kind of trying to build here over the five day. You see the supply here, right? You see the supply here above this 11, 11 area here. I, I want to keep an eye on this thing. They started coming out with 12, 12 and a half dollar calls. If this thing could get above this 11, 11 and a half area, I think this thing could start uh, waking up. Uh, also a name like, uh, let me see, uh, also a name like Snow, for example. Again, I'm trying to give you some ideas on both sides of the market even a name like snow look at the bottom of the channel here it's holding on to the bottom of the channel here with deal life as well if, you know if you st start seeing a uh, continuation of weakness uh in the market we definitely want to pay attention to the bottom of the range here uh in case this thing falls but what's cool about this tape is again it really is showing you uh how a good natural bull market tendencies are they're still negating bad news even when they give you a technical red signal right? Like they did on the queues from Thursday going into Friday, unless you were aggressively short overnight. And again, I, I know a lot of people were, but the point is it, it, it's almost like a band-aid. It's not like a, a slow drip, right? Drip, 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 right? If, right, if you watched uh, Thursday's video, we said, I think there's a shot at 298, 299. It got down to, down to the 298. It happens overnight. So you're almost unaware and you kind of don't even feel the pain. 
and you start seeing your stocks that have been just strong, 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 getting down to these macro levels, they just start to rally. So, so far, again, good bull, constructive, organic market. Uh, that's exactly what bull markets are. They continue to brush off bad news. Uh, they continue to brush off headlines and they keep on continually trapping, right? Trapping shorts uh, at the bottom of the range. And unfortunately, uh, every gap up that you're seeing, the, the last thing you want to continue doing, I, I say this after every single video, stop shorting that opening, you know, stop shorting that opening print at the open. You're going to get murdered. It's called shorting in the hole. That's where all these dip buyers are coming in. And that's where you're getting a sustained rally. So you got to be careful in doing that. If you're going to short the open, right? At least wait for the opening range low. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to see the stock, take out the previous days low, put in an opening range low on the 60-minute candle, let it rally, right? Who cares how high it rallies? If it's going to go lower, it doesn't have to take out the opening range low. At least that's the safest course of action. You know there wasn't just stops being triggered. You know there was real sellers in the crowd. And when they do confirm those opening range lows, that at least is going to give you a higher probability for the next move down. So guys, stay safe, everybody. Enjoy your long weekend. God bless. Uh, stay healthy. Do something positive for somebody. Do something nice for yourself. And just continue to live. Smile and everything else will be all right. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all on Tuesday. Take care.